How is your evening, Robbie? <laughs> My evening is pretty good, though. I've got jet lag, which is always debilitating. Oh my so god! <laughs> I'm fighting through the jet lag, but the bed is still cozy. The bed is always cozy. <laughs> I spend most of my life in bed. Robbie, I have to say that this is a great honor to have you here. Thank you for the chance to have a chat, uh, especially now when all your fans in Poland, I have to say that loud, are waiting to see you again in Krakow. How do you feel about it? I feel really good. There was a, a really nice thing that the fans did for me last time I was in Poland. And it was just a simple thing where they got out these red balloons all at the same time and then let the red balloons go into the air and i think it was i think it was during a song of mine called love my life i think that was, that was when it was i was yeah, here <laughs> uh, uh, and it was just it was just very nice that you know people had got together and organized that uh, it, it's a nice memory for me we're just waiting for you all this going on in your life right now the start of your week As I can see, you got the jet lag now, but that was so busy for you. You just announced the European tour. How do you feel being in the game again on the stage? Uh, how do I feel? But you know what? I feel there's somebody that hasn't um, rated themselves very much as a performer or as a singer. Um, I feel more confident than I've ever felt in my life. And I'm looking forward to getting better at what I do. I'm looking forward to getting on stage and not hating myself as much as I used to hate myself. And being able to find the freedom in uh, those, that sort of relinquishing of the chains that, the chains that once held me down. So how does it feel to be back in the game? In short, i can't i can't wait to get going i don't know how long that i'll last for but as soon as i start getting exhausted i'll have other thoughts but <laughs> right now i just want to get out there and be the best version of myself as long as you can robbie please do that on the occasion of the 25th uh, anniversary of your solo career you gave us the 25 which is brilliant robbie and i have to say that i think you did it in the best possible way the album is complete yeah um my management said to me that we should we should mark the anniversary of a 25 years solo and i'm not a big anniversary kind of person i'm not bothered about my birthday I, I like Christmas Day, but apart from that, all other anniversaries I'm not bothered about. But I'm glad they they said that I should do it, and I'm glad that we did do it because um, it, it's made me happy to sit down, hear these songs reimagined and reworked, and to be able to get to understand what has happened to me over the last 25 years, 27 years now. And, and understand how lucky I am. Um, I'm, I'm very grateful. So the anniversaries can be perceived differently. They can be approached as a reckoning with the past, as you said. For others, they, they are an amazing, I, I think, uh, driving force to, to just hit the stage and hit the life again. What is this uh, particular anniversary for you? What that means to you? It puts a full stop underneath a... Yeah career a, a chapter in my career and it means that then i can now go forward and reimagine it in any way that i want to um and for me just in my body and in my mind that's incredibly intoxicating because you know i don't have to feel or behave in the ways that i once felt and behaved whether that is emotionally or creatively so um yeah it's this is now the third act in my life and i've got a, a lot to look forward to i've got the film coming out and i've got the biop the uh the documentary coming out on netflix and i have all of these ideas musically and in business too that i want to do and succeed with so um it's never been better to be me you know and i can say that from a place where There was very dark periods. I, I'm not in those dark periods anymore. And um, that feels good. You're so looking forward to the future. 
It's really nice yeah. to hear that, Robbie. <laughs> Even yeah, when you're in the jet lag of your life. <laughs> yeah, I am. I, 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 I know that, you know, I, I'm jet lagged and I'm tired, but that doesn't color the fact that I've got so much to look forward to. Um, I'm, I, I keep saying this word in interviews, but I mean it. I'm very, very grateful. But I uh, can guess that everyone is always asking you if you would change anything uh, from the past for all that 25 years, if you had a chance. I'm curious what you are most proud of, what moments and what uh, you it, would it, not it, change. <laughs> it's not it's not it's not the moments that I'm most proud of. It's just the overwhelming feeling of what it's all meant. And I understand where I'm from, what I was. And the chance that this would happen to somebody like me is 15 trillion to one. And it's not lost on me. So would I change a few things? Yeah, I would. Understanding now what I need from my set list as I go forward in my life. There are several songs that I wouldn't have released. And there are several songs that I would have released in their place. Uh, but that's life. There's nothing I can do about that. Can't change that now. But the question was asked, what would I change? And that's what I would have changed. What would you not change, even if you had the opportunity to go back in time? What would I not change? I wouldn't change the day that we wrote Angels. I wouldn't change the day that we wrote Feel. Uh, <laughs> there is, there is uh, a lot of days that I wouldn't change. Um, yeah. In fact, most of them I wouldn't change. We're gonna hear them in Krakow. Let's get back to that great information. F sorry for the private question, but did you have permission from your children to go on tour, Robbie? <laughs> Do I, not really. I don't have permission. They don't want me to. Oh my God. Why? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They don't want me. They don't want daddy to go away. You know, they, you know, that there's always tears and it's always emotional. Uh, when I have to leave, even if it's for like four days, they're very, they're very excited that I do what I do for a living. They love it. You know, I, I think that it gives them immense pride and um, them being proud makes me proud too. You're such a hero uh, for them. Do you try to be a star to your kids like your dad uh, was for you as a I, comedian and a singer? Yeah. I, I, I know what my father meant to me and means to me. And I can see that that is happening to them. I can see through my eyes when I was their age, what I'm meaning to them. And that's, that feels really good. Just knowing that there is this, there is this bond that grows every day and this appreciation for me and appreciation for them in return. It's something that the universe does that's incredibly powerful and intoxicating. I love it. You seem to be a great dad. Uh, I was uh, wondering yesterday when I was thinking about you preparing to the interview, imagine the moment when one of your children just turns 16, comes to you and says, Dad, I got an audition in a band and I'm going on tour. What do you say? <laughs> I'd love that. I really genuinely would love that. I'd find it very peculiar if any of them wanted to become lawyers and doctors. I wouldn't understand that. You know, I think that my, the way that I and my wife view the world and professions is the opposite of what people used to think and feel. You know, if they came to me and said at 16, I'm going to stay on in education until I'm 27 to become a doctor. I'd be saying, are you sure you want to do that? That doesn't sound like much fun. Sounds like that you're going to be learning an awful lot of things and the hours are really, really long. It's a precarious profession. Are you sure that that's what you really want to do? Because I will back you, but I would much prefer you to be in show business. It's the opposite of how it should be. But maybe uh, like in 10 years, one of your children will give you a pill for a... Uh, uh hangover or uh, or something maybe, like that. Yeah, maybe maybe <laughs> I would have my own drug dealer then, that'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Robbie, uh, the thing is, we are so waiting for you in Krakow in Poland in March. What do you expect from us to do during that evening? 
I, I expect people, you know, my audience knows what to do. They're there to be entertained. My audience isn't a scratchy beard audience. It isn't earnest. It isn't coming to <laughs> kind of understand the lyrical content or, you know, I, I see what you did there. You know, that's not my audience. My yeah. audience is whimsical and it's silly and it wants to be thrilled and elevated to a place for an hour and 45 minutes outside of their reality. So do I. And I want to give them that. Just come ready to be a great audience. And I know that I'll be ready to be a great entertainer. That was a huge pleasure. Thank you so much for your such a fantastic, uh, honest interview. And you're a great a guy. You're a great pleasure. man. See you. Oh, well, bless you. Be well, mate. You take care of yourself. Hey.